We should now be live or any second. It usually takes a little while there. We're now we're showing up on Steam or Switch, Twitch. Okay, Madeline, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Welcome. Uh, good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Uh, so one of the really cool things that our core team does is allows community pairing sessions. And so via a form, you can ask to pair with one of our core team members and uh, we'll set up a session with you and work through um, an issue or a PR that you have um, and help you get started contributing or working with Gatsby. Um, we wanna start doing these on Twitch and then recording them and making sure that people can access them later. And so um, Sid has agreed to do one of the really popular uh, requests we get, which is just, how do I get started with Gatsby? I'm Madeline, <laughs> and I am on our core team uh, specializing in accessibility. And this is Sid, a uh, overall good human being. Hello. All right. Uh, thanks for that, Madeline. Um, what, like Madeline mentioned, one of the very common requests that we've seen in the past has been um, just folks wanting to contribute to Gatsby and not knowing where to start. Um, it's been a call that, that I've personally done over a dozen times, I think all of us have, and I think um, it's a fun call. So uh, let's let's uh, you know do that again, and hopefully this can serve as a video that folks can watch, um, you know, to learn how to get started with Gatsby. So the first thing that I, I you know that we typically you know talk about is if the user has used Gatsby before or not, and in a lot of instances, the answer to that might not be yes you know folks might not have tried gatsby in a lot of those cases the first thing i like doing is spinning up a gatsby site so um if you've never used gatsby before the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install the gatsby cli and if you have npm the way you do that is you run npm i uh, with the dash g which installs this dependency globally and you'd want to install gatsby cli so um i already have it but let's run it again nonetheless that will upgrade me to the latest version. There you go. It's done. So now we have the latest version of Gatsby CLI, which is 2.10.6. All right. So if you have the Gatsby CLI, the first thing you want to do is probably you know, spin up a new site. The way to do that is to run Gatsby new. Um, as you can see, these are all the commands that we support. Gatsby new takes a root path and a starter name. But you can also run it without anything. And that gives you a nice little interactive um, window here. So I'm going to call this project uh, Madeline is cool. And uh, we're going to create a blog. Now, the Gatsby starter blog is one of our most popular starters. It lets you spin up a blog really quickly, which uses Markdown um, you know, to source your content. Uh, when you run Gatsby new, what this does is that it takes the starter from GitHub, uses that as a template for the new site that it's creating, and uh, goes ahead and creates the directory layout, then installs packages. As you can see right now, it's installing packages. Um, once that is done, what we'll have is effectively a great starting point for a new Gatsby site. So if you've never used Gatsby before, this is how you start. Let's wait on dependencies being installed. There you go, that's done. So now it says your new Gatsby site has been successfully bootstrapped. Start developing it. Start developing it, right, sure. By running CD, Madeline is cool. So you'll see that if I open up code in this directory, we have a we have a bunch of things. We have content, we have source, we have a couple of config files. Um, and uh, if you wanna you know, start up this Gatsby set, the way to do it is, by, is, is to run Gatsby develop. Um, and this is gonna spin up the development server which will listen on changes and let us sort of build this site. So let's do that. As you can see, it's done a bunch of different things and now it's generating some thumbnails. Uh, once it's done, it'll say that it's ready. So let's wait on that. All right, I think it is. And now it says that you can view this new site on this URL. Um, let's let's quickly open the URL and see what we, uh, what we see. There you go, that's the blog starter. So we see, the homepage with a couple of uh, posts. These are the, the ones that come in by default. Now, if I were to edit one of these um, by, let me, yeah, there you go. If I were to edit one of these, I could go to content 
and say that I want to update the um, the new beginnings post and change the title to say Madeline is cool, right? If I hit save, you'll see that it now says Madeline is cool for that blog post, right? So this is this is what Gatsby Develop is. Is this is what Gatsby Develop does for you? It spins up a development server that listens on changes as you make them and lets you build your site. Um, but typically, when you want to, you know, deploy your site to production, you don't do it. Uh, I mean, you'd want to sort of build it, right? Um, and the way that works is that you run Gatsby build. And let's take a look at what that does. Um, it does a lot of the same things that Develop does, but in addition to all of that, it builds production JavaScript and CSS bundles, which you see right here. So that um, so what you get from running Gatsby build is HTML for all your pages, CSS, JavaScript, images. There you go. So it's all done. It built everything in roughly 23 seconds. If we were to you know just take a look at what it built, we could run Gatsby serve, which which spins up a local server for us. There you go. So we see Madeline is cool. That's our site. And this is a production-friendly uh, version of the site. It's currently in this directory called public in here. If you can see public somewhere on the left, there you go. And this is these are all the assets that our site includes. And these are all the things we need to sort of upload to, um, to deploy this to production. So this is what Gatsby is. This is what Gatsby. Uh, you know, this is how it works. This is how you'd spin up a new site. So if you haven't used Gatsby before, this is what you'd want to do. But uh, let's dive a little deeper. Now that we know how Gatsby works and what it does, let's talk about, um, let's talk a little bit about how it does it, right? And then we can then we can talk about how to contribute back to Gatsby. So um, the, the, the first thing I say to all, you know, folks that are interested in contributing is that there's a lot of different ways you can contribute to the Gatsby project. Um, and that includes you know, contributions in bug fixes or new features in code. Uh, but then there's also documentation. And that's something that I think a lot of people, you know, that, that might not seem obvious to a lot of people. Contributing to our docs is super appreciated. And it's really valuable for us to be able to keep improving it. Um, the learning team at Gatsby is doing that every day. And um, you know we're building docs at gatsbyjs.org. In case you haven't seen the docs, they are right here. Um, so we're trying to you know have documentation for really any uh, use case or any question that you might have. But um, but well, there, there might be something that it's not covering right now. And if you find that that's the case, we'd really appreciate you to just come in and you know help us improve that. So if if you're unsure about where to start contributing, and if you're and if touching the code base seems intimidating, which I understand it can, because it it was for me, because it's it's massive. There's just so much happening. Documentation is a great way to start. Um, so yeah, feel free to you know read through the documentation and the tutorial, and if something seems wrong, tell us. Um, all right. So with that, let's look at what we have in this giant monorepo. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, the monorepo for Gatsby is at GitHub.com/slash/gatsbyjs/slash/gatsby. Now the reason I, I refer this refer to this as a monorepo is because um, well, what a monorepo is, in case you haven't seen uh, these before, is that it's one repository which includes more than one package, right? And in this case, if you look at the packages directory, you see that there's about, I think there's about 104, 105 of them at this point, uh, which is a lot of packages. And a lot of them share code between each other, right? Uh, and that's what mono repos are great for. Imagine having 105 different GitHub repos for each of these. Now that would be really hard, right? That would be even harder to contribute to. So, um, but but with these advantages come a little bit of complexity. And ideally, you shouldn't have to sort of worry about them. But uh, but we'll talk about them anyway in case you know it comes up. Um, anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get back. So this is a mono repo. This has a lot of packages. But besides code, this uh, repository also has all our docs. So everything that you've seen on GatsbyJS.org, including the reference guides, you know, all of these guides here, and including all our tutorials and the showcase. All of this is coming from this directory in here as well. 
So this monorepo is not just for code, but also for all our documentation. Um, so in case you want to you know, go ahead and contribute to documentation and you aren't interested in contributing to code, you you know feel free to jump off right here, but take a look at this directory. This is the one that you're, you're probably going to be interested in. Um, for everyone else, let's look at uh, what else that is. So I'm going to open VS Code because it will be a little easier to navigate. Um, on a very broad level, if you look at this um, directory, you'll see that there's a couple of folders that that are more important than others, right? And those are like um, those are packages, the one that I that I previously pointed to, right? And then there's um, E2E tests, which is our end-to-end -end tests. There's examples and there's integration tests. Um, there's also www. Now, if you were watching closely, we were looking at gatsbyjs.org previously. This entire site is, the, this site lives in the same monorepo and it lives in this directory, which is www. So in, in case you like something on the site that you wanna, you know, uh, learn from, or if there's a component that you want to, you know, use in your own site, feel free to come in and, and, and uh, you know, it's all open source. Feel free to take whatever you like and feel free to contribute back if you like. Um, anyway, so there's www, there's starters, which is all the starters that uh, you previously saw me running Gatsby New, um, and the blog starter is the one that we, sh we, we were looking at. That lives here in starter slash blog. You'll see that we have other starters as well. There's a default starter, there's a hello world starter, and there are even starters for themes. Um, there's a lot going on here, and we'll talk about it as we move forward. But just know that these are all different templates to start up your Gatsby site. Right, now let's get back to E2E tests, integration tests, and packages, right? The most uh, interesting of all of these, in my opinion, is the packages directory. This is literally where all the NPM packages that you can install um, that are maintained by the Gatsby core team and the community on this GitHub repo, all of these live in this directory. So everything from Gatsby CLI, which we installed a while ago, to Gatsby link, the Gatsby image, even something like Gatsby source um, MongoDB um, lives in this package right here. So uh, so yeah, this, this includes Gatsby core, um, a lot of plugins, a couple of themes as well. Um, as you can see, our plugins include uh, different kinds of plugins. There's Gatsby source plugins, which are typically plugins that let you source data from different data sources. There's also Gatsby transformer plugins, which is which are plugins that let you transform some data that you already have, but into a different shape, right? Um, along with those, there's also other stuff, like there's Gatsby image and Gatsby link, which are abstractions that 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 we have to do stuff like render an image in a Gatsby site or render a link in a Gatsby site with like you know with, with with super cool features that you get out of the box. And in case you haven't seen these before, we'll talk about this a little more as we move forward. But just know for now that these are this is where all the packages that we maintain and publish live. Um, now the one that you probably are most interested in is Gatsby itself, which is Gatsby core. That lives in a directory called, as you might have guessed, Gatsby, um, and uh, this this is where this is where much of the project lives, right? When you run Gatsby new, or when you run Gatsby develop, or Gatsby build, uh, most of the code that you're running lives in this directory right here. And um, um, I guess it'd be you know maybe we should uh, talk a little bit about how this is structured and what's uh what's in here do we have any questions by the way so far is there anything that uh madeline anything you wanna you wanna point out that might not uh that might that i might have not said no this is a really good overview so far um yeah i'm i'm excited i'm monitoring chat i don't see anything specific thus far okay but okay. perhaps as right, we dive cool. in all right let's dive let's dive right in then in that case so um we were talking about the Gatsby package, the core package. This is it. Um, in here now, typically on 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 npm, if you have a package and if you try to import something from it, um, it usually gets imported from what is called the main um, file, right? And in this case, you just see that the main is set to Gatsby browser entry in this directory called cache dir. So, so the first thing you should probably look at is what that is. Um, 
Gatsby browser entry, which is in here. Uh, I can't spell Gatsby. That's amazing. <laughs> there you go. Gatsby browser entry is in the cache directory. And this is the entry point for when you import Gatsby in your site. So if, if I had um, in Madeline is cool, which was our project previously, if you look at any of the pages like this one, on line two, we import link in GraphQL from Gatsby. Um, this import is hitting this file. So let's take a look at what this file contains. Um, this file has a bunch of stuff, but uh, the, most the most interesting stuff is, I mean, all the exports are right here. So you'll see that we export link, which is the Gatsby link component, which is imported here. In case you haven't seen that before and you're wondering what a link component is, um, if you want to link to another page in your Gatsby site, you could typically do that by just creating an anchor tag like we do on the web. But with Gatsby, we have a component for it called the link component. And uh, you might wonder why, why use that over an anchor tag. Um, the reason you probably want to use that is that that gives you a bunch of cool features out of the box. For instance, uh, Gatsby will pre-load data for you as you hover on a link before you even hit the page, which, which typically results in a really sort of quick navigation experience amongst other things, right? So, um, and that's just one thing. There's, there's a lot more to it. Uh, for instance, every Gatsby site, once it sort of hydrates your client-side JavaScript, becomes an SPA and a React app. So every, every time you navigate after, after the first load, you're not actually downloading HTML at all. You're just downloading JavaScript chunks and navigating to the next page. So all of that is made possible by this link component. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, try it out. It's in the default starter. It's everywhere. If you want to learn more about it, um, it is a separate package in this packages directory that we saw previously. So there is a package called Gatsby Link, which has you know a readme amongst other things. So please take a look at that. Um, but anyway, we were talking about Gatsby browser entry, and that includes Link because it's re-exported from here. Along with that, it includes GraphQL, which is uh, you might have seen this previously um, in here as well the other thing that was imported in this line. And you'll see that GraphQL is what wraps these queries. Uh, we'll talk about what it does in a bit, but uh, for now, just know that if you want to write a GraphQL query in a Gatsby site, um, you'll want to wrap it with this import. And that's what, and this is where it's coming from. Um, along with that, there's also stuff like use static query, which is um, an API in Gatsby, which lets you write queries, GraphQL queries in your components. Right, so uh, that's where that's what this file is doing. Um, but at this point, you're probably wondering about the rest, like when, for instance, Gatsby develop and Gatsby build. Right, surely those aren't things you import from Gatsby; they're just commands you run in a CLI. So um, you might be wondering where those are coming from, and that is what takes us back to package JSON. Along with main, there's also a file. There's also a key called bin, and uh, bin in this case stands for binary. Um, the idea is that this package registers a binary called Gatsby. And if you try running that, that calls this file. Um, let's take a look at what this file is. It's in a disk directory. So let's look at the source version. And you'll see that this does, this really does just one thing. It just requires Gatsby CLI. Um, and at this point, you must you, you, you might be wondering why not just use Gatsby CLI instead as opposed to having this in Gatsby as well. Um, and that's a really good, you know, that's a really fair question. Um, but I would hold on to that thought. And we'll come back to why in a bit. But for now, just know that a lot of the binary stuff that, that gets run when you when you run either Gatsby develop or build is coming from Gatsby CLI, but is also exported in the main Gatsby um, package. Just let's we we'll come back to this. Um, anyway, so uh, let's follow, let's follow these requires and see where it takes us, right? So let's take a look at the Gatsby CLI package. And you'll see that when you require this one, this has a main as well, or it does not, does it? Oh, there you go, it does. And that has a lib index. And what this does is, so that's compiled code. Let's look at source index. So you'll see right here that a lot of this is the code that gets run when you, you know, when you, when you run a command in Gatsby. It runs something called create CLI, which, which, you know, sort of is an abstraction to create 
you know, wrapper CLI that gets run. Let's take a look at what that does. You'll see that that has code for local commands, right? Like this is where you run either develop, there you go. You can see that if I run develop, it will do a bunch of things, take a bunch of different options. And eventually what it, what it runs is get command handler for develop, right? Um, and a lot of these abstractions in here are, are here for many different reasons, some being historical, some being the fact that they make sort of code organization easy. But uh, ignoring all of that, the most important thing to know here is that what this is eventually running is going back to our previous package, which is Gatsby, is this file called command slash develop right here. A uh, cool thing to note, in case you haven't noticed, a lot of this is now TypeScript. Uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to Blaine uh, on our team. Blaine is very cool, just like Madeline. Um, what the, Blaine has has been driving this uh, this entire TypeScript um, initiative over the past few months, and, um, and it's really cool because he's um, not only has he moved significant chunks of our project over to TypeScript, he's also enabled the community to do so. I think we saw about 40, 50 PRs over the last week, right, Madeline? That, it's some large number, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some really large number, which also he managed to review and merge in, which was which is another thing altogether. But yeah, Blaine is cool. Uh, and now we, we use TypeScript. Uh, TypeScript is nice because it lets us catch a lot of low-hanging fruit errors. Um, but let's get back to what we were talking about. We were talking about what happens when you run Gatsby develop. So uh, we're back to the Gatsby package. And as you see, there's a directory called commands. And each of these are run. So when Gatsby develop runs, this is where things start getting really interesting. You'll see that there's obviously a lot of code in this file. But let's look at the stuff that's important. The first thing that happens all right, when you run develop is somewhere here. So you'll see that it calls this function called bootstrap, right? And the interesting thing here is that if you look at build in commands, that also calls bootstrap right here. So this one, you're probably thinking, hey, looks like this is like common code between both of these commands. And you're absolutely right if that's what you're thinking. Bootstrap is, uh, amongst other things, common code that needs to be run for both develop and build. And uh, we'll talk about what Bootstrap does in a few minutes, but just know for now that it does a lot of setup and bootstrapping of things um, that both develop and build need. So in this case, develop runs Bootstrap, um, and then after that sets up a bunch of things. In this case, you'll see that it sets up a hot reloader. Now, this is something you need in develop and not in build, because when you're running develop, you want to be able to, like we saw previously, you want to be able to edit changes, I mean, edit uh, things on your local file system, and you want those changes to sort of be picked up by the develop process, right? So that happens with, with this. Similarly, there's also a schema hot reloader um, that does the same thing, but not for your files, but for your GraphQL schema. And we'll come to the implications of that later, but just know that this is doing the same thing, but not for your files, instead for your data, right? Um, after that, the first thing Gatsby does is it processes all your initial queries. Now, one thing that might not, uh, that we didn't actually talk about, which we'll you know, take a quick step away to do, is that Gatsby uses GraphQL pretty much everywhere. If you're using, if you're building a Gatsby site and you're using any source plugin, the data from your source is typically available in Gatsby's GraphQL layer, all right? You don't have to know about how GraphQL works to use it though, which is great. All you need to know is how to write GraphQL queries. In case you haven't seen that before, we have some lovely docs courtesy of our learning team. I reckon there is a page for GraphQL. There you go. There is one. There's a glossary page. And there is also, a, so this page talks about what you know GraphQL is. And there's also a page called GraphQL and Gatsby, which talks about how we use it. So please feel free to take a, take a look at these docs um, and, um, in case you already know all of this, that's great too. So uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're building a Gatsby site, you're going to want to write queries to fetch data. And these will be GraphQL queries, right? Um, going back to what we were talking about, uh, when you when develop starts running, your site might have a lot of different queries. But these queries need to be processed initially so that data from them is available 
right? And that's what happens right here. We init it's called initial process queries because we run the initial batch of queries, right? And after doing that, you'll see this db.save state here. Um, this is mostly just saving cache into a little database. After all of that, there's other things that you know that sound not very interesting, so I'll skip them for now. But uh, just know that this is a lot of internal implementation details. After all of that, you'll see that we have something called a query watcher, which starts listening to a develop queue. So we started up Gatsby, we ran Bootstrap, we processed initial queries, and now we're ready. And we want to sort of wait for more queries to come in. So we start listening to a queue. So now if you start making changes, those get added to the queue and then those get, you know, those trigger changes. So that's what that's what's happening here. There's a queue set up. All right. And finally, after all of that, we start a server. Now you must wonder what this server is. Um, the answer to that question is what you previously saw right here, which is localhost 8000, which serves your site. Um, one thing that I skipped over there, which we'll talk about now is the second URL, which we'll see, there you go, it's right here. You can see printed right here. And you see that the first URL still works. That's the, um, that's the site, the development version of the site. The second URL is this thing called graphical. If you've used Gatsby before, if you've used GraphQL before, you've probably seen graphical before. If you haven't, just know that it's like Madeline and Blaine, graphical is cool. Uh, and what, what graphical is, is that it lets you um, visualize all your GraphQL data and lets you, it helps you write queries for them. All right. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to write a query for something very quickly, uh, just to show you how that works. We have, um, we have, there you go. We have site metadata in here, right? And we have a title, which is. Gatsby startup blog. Let's change that to who is cool. Uh, <laughs> if you know the answer to that question, uh, you get cake. Uh, please email us at support at gatsbygs.com with the answer to who is cool. Uh, <laughs> so if I if I run, if I want to query that, the way to do that is to write site and then site metadata and title. And the, and the cool thing here is you might have noticed that as I'm writing these, it is helping me with autocomplete. And that's what I like about graphical because honestly, remembering all of this is hard, right? Especially when you have a lot of different data sources. So in this case, if I hit the query, you see that it it, it says the title is Zool School. So this is what GraphQL is, graphical is, I'm sorry. And this is what the second URL printed here is. So coming back to what we were talking about, we started a bunch of servers. What were those servers? The server was these two URLs. These are the things that get started and the servers that are gonna keep running, all right? Um, so that's what happens in here at line 434. And then there's a bunch of TypeScript stuff that frankly, I don't even understand. But after all of that, you'll see that there's a lot of logs, but uh, that's pretty much it. See, it ends with a lot of logs and then a couple of you know checkers and then has a done function call somewhere inside. But that's really the gist of what, what's, what's happening when you're running Gatsby Develop. It sets up servers, runs some initial queries, all right? listens in uh, listens on those urls and every time you make changes it sort of reruns those queries and, and gives you you know new pages um you're probably wondering between all this how files are handled and that, that that that'd be a great question to ask at this point so let's quickly talk about what's happening there when i said that the server was started one thing i didn't mention is that localhost 8000 is running Webpack dev server for you. So if you've used create react app before, or if you've used just Webpack in general before, you might know that Webpack has a development server, which lets you, you know, iterate quickly and write code and see changes live in a, you know, in a development server, which doesn't sort of build everything, but instead is optimized for, for speed. Um, that's the same thing we're running here. So start server. Uh, if we were to dive a little deeper into what that does, which will be a function right here, you'll see that this thing is running Webpack. So between all of this, somewhere here, there you go, await Webpack config. So this is starting up web, Webpack with some you know, specific configuration that Gatsby needs and then getting a compiler out of it. And eventually it's it's listening in you know on a, on a URL in an Express app. Um, 
and there you go. This is where it sets up underscore 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 GraphQL, which is graphical, which we saw a few minutes ago. So, um, so yeah, this is this is sort of the basics of how Gatsby starts up and how it works. Um, we should probably spend a little more time talking about how build works and how the other pieces in the puzzle sort of get together. But before we we do that, I want to do a quick time check and see how we're doing. Um, Madeline, are you are you with me? I am with you. Uh, yeah, right. this is awesome. This is such a good overview. All right, how how are we doing on time? We're about thirty minutes in. Okay, so we have another. Caitlin, that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, I mean, technically, you know, we're going till eleven. We have our captioner until eleven, and um, which is like in ten minutes. Um, oh so, really? We just yeah. have ten minutes more. No. Okay, cool. If that's yeah, unfortunately, case, technical difficulties slow things down yeah, a little bit. That's but. fair. But we'll keep doing this. So in case you're totally. listening and in case you wanted to, you know, hang out for longer, please know that Madeline um is, you know, is is driving this and we are going to be streaming more of our um pair programming sessions. Also huge thanks to Caitlin who's on the call as well. Caitlin um does marketing amongst other things at Gatsby and she is awesome. And uh, she is the one who set up this entire, you know, this whole thing uh, with this whole system of streaming and whatnot. Uh, we also have Joanna who is live captioning everything I'm speaking. I reckon she is now typing what I'm saying. <laughs> Joanna, <laughs> thanks for doing that, Joanna. It's, it's really important to us that, that everything we do is accessible and I really appreciate um her doing this so big shout out to joanna all right so let's get back um we yeah. spoke about develop we spoke about build we spoke about a lot of things that gatsby does and how it how it does them right but one thing that everyone might you know sort of think about is how do i get started contributing right you don't have to know everything gatsby does to start contributing it would be a shame if you had to and um and, and the good thing is you don't uh, Let's spend a few minutes taking a look at how you'd go about cloning the repo and what you'd have to do to make your first contribution, right? So the first thing you want to do if you want to contribute to Gatsby is you probably want to pull down the, the repo. Now, when in case you haven't done this before, you're going to need a CLI thing called Git, all right? Uh, in case you, you don't have it, please go ahead and install it. I think you can install it. How to install Git? You probably even have a page for it on our docs, but uh, just go ahead and Google this, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, it'll just come with your machine. And uh, we we can link to this in the chat. But once you have Git, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run Git clone with this URL. All right. Uh, once you have a clone, I'll show you what that looks like. That looks like this directory in here. And you'll see that it says git master because I'm currently on the master branch and I have all of these files, right? Um, the way to start contributing is to A, have the GitHub repo cloned down, B, find find the change you want to do, and then C is make the change and make a make a pull request. All right. Um, let's do that right now to see how we we'd approach that. All right. So I'm gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is is A was getting the GitHub repo. We already have that, as you can see. B is finding something to do. Now, uh, the good thing is there's always stuff to do. We currently have 603 issues on Yatsby. Uh, we, the, the issue tracker is a combination of stuff we want to do, the community uh, you know, uh, would like us to do, and also bugs and reports and, and many other things. Um, so if you quickly look at all of the issues, you'll see that the label very helpfully. And one of them that uh, immediately sticks out, which is the third one here, all right. And I promise you, I did not, I did not plan this. I just, it just happened to be assigned to me. I don't know who did that, uh, and it looks like a good change to make. So let's le let's take a look at what this issue is about. It says navigate does not return a promise. Okay, steps to reproduce are if you import navigate from Gatsby and you run it, you you know this should work, but it doesn't, all right? And um, the good thing is that the author of this issue has been kind enough to actually really, you know, thoughtfully write why that's the case and what we need to do to fix this, okay? So the first thing I'd do is I'd go ahead and try to reproduce this. So let's go back to our previous site. 
which was Madeline's school. And let's um, let's try to let's try to run navigate. So in this site, on say the index page, what we're going to do is that we are going to add a little button somewhere around here, all right? And in this button, I'm going to add an on-click handler, okay? And when click is run, what we're going to do is we're going to run a function called navigate from Gatsby, which is what the issue was talking about, all right? Now, uh, if I run navigate, I think it takes a URL. Uh, it does. Oh, great. So I can say navigate to, uh, let's see, what other pages do we have? We had a page for another blog post, which would be all right, new beginnings. So let's navigate to new beginnings. And OK, too many of those. All right. And then once you do, uh, I want to try running like a console log in the dot .10. And according to the issue, this shouldn't work. Well, I mean, it should work, but it doesn't work. So let's try that out. Let's run Gatsby develop, see what happens with our button. We should probably add some text inside the button. Because uh, you know, honestly, how you, yeah, it would be nice to have a button with some text on it. Click me. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Uh, we have a button which should uh, which should do yeah, something. Index Let's page. index page. Perfect. There you uh -huh. go. We see. Click me. So if we try to if we try to hit this, we should see a giant arrow pop up. Let's see. There you go. It oh. does navigate and then it breaks, saying, "Cannot read property then of undefined," which means that. Uh, okay, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Do you know how to pronounce this? Is it Antoine? Or is it like? <laughs> we'll just okay. take the person for. <laughs> okay, the for, author of this contributing. issue. The author of this issue. Antoine is Rousseau. Is, there we go. It's Antoine. Nice, Antoine. Got it. Awesome. So Antoine has is absolutely right. The the um the actual result and the expected result are all completely true. We do see this error, and this is the first step in in uh, in fixing something. You try to reproduce it, and you see if it's actually happening, and it does. Now let's try to fix it. Antoine has been really helpful and has kind of already told us what we need to do here. He says that there is a Gatsby link which instead of returning the function, just you know, just sets it on a global variable. Um, let's take a look at where that is. He has linked to it. So if I were to open that URL, we see this line of code. This is in the Gatsby link package. We previously saw how Gatsby link was re-exported in Gatsby. So we know that this is where it's coming from. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in our Project repo. Um, there you go. This is already selected. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> and then if I add a return here, I think this should add. This should return what what this function returns. Now navigate is coming from reach router, if I recall correctly. So I think this should fix it. Um, we are now at a really interesting point in in the path, which is how do we test this locally, right? And um, there's obviously. There, there might not be a lot of time for us to go into to how to do that in depth, uh, but I am gonna show you how very quickly, and I will also we will also link to to you know sort of instructions on how to do this if you haven't before. So TLDR, you're gonna want to install globally a package called Gatsby Dev CLI. I already have it installed. Once you have it installed, you're gonna want to do two things in your Gatsby directory. In this case, you might look at the diff, which is I made this change. In this directory, you're going to want to run um, yarn build. And what yarn build will do is that it will build the packages that I tell it to. In this case, that's Gatsby and Gatsby link, because those are the packages that I'm changing. Uh, that's interesting. Build not found. Hmm. Is it yarn run build? Do I not I have to do watch. Oh, yarn watch works as well. Do we not even have build in the package? So that would be really odd. I run it all the time. Maybe I, maybe I don't have dependencies. Let's run Yarn Watch. Oh, that works. All right, Rad. awesome. I, I maybe it's not build. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Forget everything I said. Things become <laughs> second nature if you do it enough. This is why we have this nice <laughs> intro. Yep. So uh, now we have Watch running, and this is basically doing what we previously wanted to, but it's also you know looking for more changes. Now. Now that we have this running, you're going to want to do one final step, which is in the project, which you want to test this in, you're going to want to run Gatsby dev, right? 
and I'm gonna run Gatsby dash dev in here. Now, amongst other things, this will spin up, I kid you not, this will actually spin up a local NPM registry, which it will publish your changes to and then install from it. Um, the reasoning behind why we need to do this as opposed to just a yarn link is, is lengthy um, and probably out of scope of this call, but uh, just know that it handles edge cases that yarn link might not handle. Um, and that's why we do this. But the good thing is you don't need to know about, I mean, you don't need to necessarily, uh, you know, know about how it works. You can just use it, um, you know, and this is how you use it. It is now running. Let's give that a few more minutes because it usually, um, I know what it looks like when it's done. There you go. Uh, it says publishing. So it's not publishing each of these packages. Hmm. We're getting close to the end, I think. Yeah, almost there. Like in a few more seconds. Let's wait. And then once this is done, we, we should just be able to test our changes on the new Gatsby site that we're testing it on. Um, I yeah. mean, and, and and if we can, then we will we, we'll go ahead and fix Antoine's issue and also sort of, you know, close that, you know, open a PR. So let's, uh, let's give this a few more seconds. I think I saw some comments in the stream from Benjamin who said it's nice to see uh, these pair programming sessions sort of resume. Uh, Absolutely, I'm super excited about us doing this again. Uh, thanks, Ben. Ben has been joining our community pair programming sessions and our calls for, for, for months, honestly, years at this point, I think. So it's super cool to hear from him. Um, all right, so this is done. And now we should just be able to run, um, we should be able to run uh, Gatsby develop. Yep, while this Gatsby dev is still running. So you like leave that in a separate tab and then run Gatsby develop, right? <laughs> yep, yep. So Gatsby dev is still running because it's gonna wait on more changes, um, you know, in case we make more of them in Gatsby in the package itself, just like Yarn watch watches for, you know, changes for Babel to run, Gatsby dev is, is listening for changes to sort of copy over to our test project, uh, which is why I keep that running. And in another tab, I've opened uh, the project again and run Gatsby develop. So now, if we were to try to do the same thing, which we previously did, things should just work. All right, crap, click the wrong link. All right, so now we have the button. If I click it this time, it still breaks. That's wonderful. What did we do wrong? Did Gatsby dev CLI not work? That has happened in the past, so I would not be surprised. All right, so very quickly, let's check if Gatsby link inside our test project actually got updated or not. Um, it's in here, I reckon. There should be a navigate. Alrighty, this is it, I think. Navigate, navigate. Oh, there is a return window dot navigate. Hmm. So it is doing, it is, it did get the change, but that didn't fix it either, which is fine. Uh, let's iterate and see how to fix it. So on click, it says cannot read property then of undefined, which is the same line of code that was previously failing on. All right, and navigate is coming from Gatsby. Let's take a look at the re-export and see if that does some wrapping. And maybe that doesn't, uh, you know, return what we want it to. So if you look at navigate in here, this is the one that's coming from all right, so this is the one that's coming from Gatsby link. Cool, and the one in Gatsby link is the one we changed, I reckon, isn't it? Let's take a look. So, all right, so this is the one we changed. This is the one where we added the return. Maybe underscore, underscore, underscore navigate doesn't have a return at all. Let's find out. So this, if I recall correctly, if you, if you do a quick grep, we'll know where it gets added. There you go. So this gets added at, um, where does this get added? One of these, there you go. So in init, in navigation, in Gatsby, is where we set this function. Oh, there you go. So we, we, we wrap, so this is a function that takes a bunch of things and then calls navigate. 
Uh, let's find out if Navigate is actually uh, returning anything at all. Maybe it's not. OK, so Navigate comes from Reach Router. In this case, I'd probably want to take a look at if Reach Router actually returns anything from Navigate. I remember Antoine saying something about how it does. Um, but I want to be sure. So let's find out. So it does have a Navigate function, all right? And this doesn't mention if it returns anything or not, does it? All right, it does not talk about it returning anything. We can get into the GitHub and find out. I think we need to start wrapping up, Sid. But yeah. this is another place where having TypeScript in place and knowing exactly what each function returns would be really helpful in the future. So i am super excited about the questions. <laughs> Huh? Sounds like a good pairing session. It uh, does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of stuff that this is the kind of stuff that TypeScript is helping us solve. And uh, if you already know what's broken here, and if you are currently chuckling while I try to find out, please go ahead and open a PR. We would love that. I would love to love to help review a PR and find out what the what what this is and why this isn't working. And uh, now you know how to do that in case you haven't done it before. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope this was I hope this was as much uh, fun for everybody else as it was for me uh, doing it. I hope this was um, you know I hope this helps answer some questions. Um, Madeline, do you want to talk about when we're doing this next? Yeah. So uh, this vod will be up in on Twitch for two weeks, and then it'll move to YouTube. Um, we will post a link if you want to sign up to pair program with us in the future. Um, and we'll try and schedule those a little bit out so that we can make sure that we have live captioning, which is super important to us. Yep. And in case you, you've forgotten who, who's cool, um, you know, if you know the answer to that question, email us. And uh, <laughs> And thank you again for joining. We'll see yeah, you soon. And also, just a quick shout out um, Aisha Blake has um, her uh, blah, 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 streaming session coming up next <laughs> Thursday uh, at 2 30 p.m. Eastern, I believe. So keep an eye out for that. There is information below um, on the, the channel page on Twitch. Yep. Aisha, super cool. Don't miss that yeah. session. You should watch her. Yes, thanks for uh, being in chat, Aisha. That was really nice of you. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. Thanks. See you. See you. Bye.